2022 was an amazing season of disc golf. The Pro Tour made some adjustments, we got to see a couple new courses and tournaments, and the moments were better for it. With events all around the US and over in Europe, we saw some great venues with some really great finishes. That's what we're focusing on today. The season started out with a bang and it ended with a bang. But a lot has happened since the start of the season, a lot of different winners and so many different events. But to win an event such as a major, elite series, or a silver series, you're going to have to go the extra mile to get that victory. What happens when we play a whole entire event and players are tied at the end of the round? We go into a sudden death playoff. Winner take all, these are those crazy moments we look for when the stakes are the highest. You have grinded throughout the entire week to get to this point. Now it's a 1v1 battle between the best of the event. Time to show what you're made of. And we had plenty of those moments throughout the 2022 season. Playoffs are what we look for in disc golf. So I collected every playoff that happened in the Elite Series, Silver Series, and Majors from this year. All playoffs are exciting, but some more than others. So I started with the least exciting, and I ended with the most suspenseful ones, so let's hop right into it. Every playoff from the 2022 season. An exciting battle throughout the Great Lakes Open this year. Two contenders competing at one of the best tournaments all year. We know Calvin Heimberg has been at the top for years now, but his opponent is a little lesser known. Corey Ellis has been playing disc golf for quite some time now, but it wasn't until this year where he started to really pop off. He's had some good performances in the past, but just not quite there fighting for a title. D-Glow would be his event. Him and Calvin tied for first going into the final round. Calvin would get out ahead early, but Corey would battle back. Hole 17, Calvin had a two-shot lead, but Corey would make two amazing birdies on the last two holes to tie it up. A very pressured putt on the last for Corey to force a playoff with Calvin. We head to hole one, Corey would draw to go first. Here's his drive on the steep downhill shot. This needs oh to, no. This needs to turn. Keep turning. It needs get to down. slow down. Oh. oh. Is it? No. no. <laughs> From what the commentators say, Calvin didn't know on the tee that Corey was out of bounds. They thought he was safe by the crowd's reaction. Calvin would throw a great turnover shot a little early into the woods looking at a par. After confirming that Corey was indeed out, Calvin just had to lay up and take the par. Corey did give it a great run for par, but it just wasn't enough. A sad ending for Corey, but heartbreak will always be the heaviest in the sudden death playoffs. We actually get Calvin back to back for this one, but a different dance partner. The Jonesboro Open was a very contested one at the top, players like Dickerson and Burr falling just short, and Kevin Jones missing out on a playoff by just one shot. We go to hole 18, Macbeth, Calvin, and Jones are all tied at 25 under. Jones would make par and stay at 25. Calvin and Macbeth, on the other hand, would throw amazing shots to force each other to birdie. We head to hole 1 again, just like for Deeklo. Same order, too. Calvin gets to throw second, Macbeth up first on the very long, very tough par 3. Macbeth's shot wouldn't flip up and sail. Instead, it pushes to the left into the tree line. He's looking at having to scramble to save his par. Ball is in Calvin's court. He can take control of the tournament and seal the deal right now with a great shot. Is it flipping? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. Oh, yep. good night. Oh, yep. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Two playoff wins for Calvin. Calvin had a great season and brought us some really intense moments. If I see Calvin in another playoff, my money's on him. We head across the pond for the next one. No, not the European Open. This was a Silver Series a week prior to the Major Championship. The PCS Sula Open held in Norway made for a very good event. Dominated by the European players, but there were some Americans in the event like Kevin Jones, James Conrad, and Calvin Heimberg. But these guys weren't the American that would battle it out in the end. Greg Barsby would have a head-to-head -head battle with Jakob Semerad from the Czech Republic. A great battle all the way down to the wire. Barsby doing Barsby things, chaining out a throw-in on hole 17. He seems to be the best from that distance. Hole 18, Jakob would have a one-shot lead over Barsby. Both of them safe off the tee, but Jakob would be going first. His forehand shot would skip out of bounds. He was just going for par, that's all he needed. Now he's looking at a bogey. Barsby plays safe, secures his par, we go to the playoff. We return to hole 18 again, Jakob up first. He plays a bit more aggressive than the last time, trying to get himself a good look at going for the birdie. Barsby does the same, both players in position. We didn't get a good look at the green the first time they played it, but it's surrounded by OB. Very tight, very tricky shot to get in there for birdie. Jakob up first would send it a little deep, just out of bounds. But he's in position to make a par. That putt is doable. The pressure's on Barsby now. Does he play it safe and lay up, hoping Yaka misses it, or does he go for the birdie and the win? He goes for the shot. Of course he got to go for the win. Landing just short, looking at about a 20 to 25 footer for the win. Yaka makes his putt to save his par. All pressure on Barsby's putt. 
Love the basket on top of the tractor, too. <gasps> oh, that just barely made it in. <laughs> The Pro Tour Championship was one of the best events of the year. I love this format, it brings in a whole different vibe to a disc golf event. Every day players are battling it out, not to win, but to survive. Every shot matters, your seeding matters, it makes for a great event. And the finish to this event was very epic. Only four players left after three rounds of disc golf, Burr, Macbeth, Wysocki, and Robinson. Every player would try their best, but it was Robinson and Wysocki who would jump out ahead. Burr almost got back into it at the end, but fell just short. Instead, it was Ricky Wysocki who had to make an incredible birdie on hole 18 to tie it up with Isaac Robinson. This course was set up for players to attack at the end, but then 18 was made out to be this incredibly long and hard par 4. Ricky was able to make birdie when he needed to. Now what about when he had to do it in the playoff? The difference between first and second in this event? $15,000. The stakes are high, now they get even higher in a sudden death playoff. Both players would get into position off the tee with Robinson being up first. Turnover shot that would come up just short, he's looking at a par for sure. Time for Ricky to do what he does and go get that championship title. This is Ricky and I mean, looks this identical. is not lazy editing. This is not us just repeating what just happened. This is Ricky going 480 and throwing the sidearm to the same. From there, it wasn't a tap in, but it was Ricky Wysocki putting for the win. Wysocki tops off an incredible end of his touring season. Isaac Robinson, well, he came up just short. That final hole doesn't set up super well for him, but he fought hard. He had a great season and gave us one of the best battles we've ever seen, with incredibly high stakes. What a great battle. Now we've already seen money raise the stakes. Playoffs are stressful as it is, and money adds to it, but what matters more than money? Prestige. Writing your name in the history books of disc golf, and you have to do that by winning majors. Winning Worlds? Well, that's the way to do it. In Emporia, Kansas this year, Worlds was a very long, very tight race. I say long because both courses they played are pretty long. It's a bomber's course, and one of those bombers showed up. Aaron Gossage put on a performance of a lifetime. Every round this guy was in it, he played his heart out, he showed a performance that we've never seen from him. But to win Worlds, you gotta beat one guy, and that's Paul Macbeth. He had him beat up until the 16th hole where Macbeth made birdie. Then on hole 17, Macbeth took the lead, making this insane putt. But Gossage didn't back down. His round wasn't over yet. He played hole 18 to perfection, capturing the birdie to force a playoff for a major title. We go to hole 16. Of course, it's got to be 16. Like, all the other playoffs either start on hole 1 or hole 18. Hole 16 at Emporia Country Club is iconic. Gossage up first. Same mid-range heavy hyzer. Got to catch the right side. That's not in. After that, Macbeth still had to get the job done on the island, and he redeems himself from what happened at the 2021 Worlds. This is certainly It's on. too good. Is it all the way to the back? Yes. yes. Another Macbeth title. Great fight from Gossage. He's going to be a menace for quite some time, but what a finish to another world championship. This feels like a lifetime ago, but it was actually still this year. The 2022 season started out with a bang at the Las Vegas Challenge. Hype around a young gun from the year prior turned out to be true. Gannon Burr came out swinging, going straight to the top of the leaderboard and staying there until the final hole. Other players challenged, but they all fell except for one guy. Drew Gibson was right behind Burr, but he didn't take the lead. On the 18th hole, Gannon had a chance to win. If the sub shot stays in bounds and he makes birdie, he wins his first Elite Series title. But it didn't. It skipped just past the basket, out of bounds, giving Gibson the opening he needed. He would tie it up. We would have a playoff for the first event of the season. A season of playoffs would ensue, but this is where it all started. Gannon fought, and he fought hard. They would match birdie for birdie. Every playoff we've looked at only lasted a max of one holes. Players made mistakes, or their opponents made the shots they needed to. This playoff was different. Holes would pass, both players not giving an inch, until the fourth playoff hole. Gannon up first on the short par 4 with OB bunkers surrounding the green. His shot would stay in one of those bunkers, leaving him a putt to save the birdie. Gibson played safe, lays up the drive, and puts his up shot right by the basket. Gannon needed this to keep the playoff going. As I've said, we start with the good playoffs and we work our way to the better ones. Well, here's the best playoff of the season by far. Des Moines, Iowa, end of the summer swing. Picker Park is an amazing course that makes for some amazing highlights. Some crazy lines with some major distances needed. Two players fit that bill and they battled it the best they could. Simon Lazat, not a shock, he's had a great season with some amazing wins. His opponent? Robert Burridge. 
Well, if you want to know more about him, check out my profile about what this kid can do. But for the Des Moines Challenge, he showed that he could stick with the best. He held onto a lead with Simon chasing him down the whole time. I mean, eventually Simon caught him, but we have seen higher ranked players fall quicker than what Burge did. He held on, came in clutch on the final hole to get his way into a playoff. And now we get to the good stuff. Hole 1, Simon would biff his upshot, giving Burge his chance at winning. Burridge then would kind of biff the putt to win. Hole 2, easy birdies for both players. Hole 3 is one of the new designs at Pickard. Downhill, type par 3, we didn't see too many players birdie it. Simon gets through the tree line about circle's edge. Burridge, on the other hand, hits early tree and would have to jump putt for the birdie. Here are both players' putts. Oh. Oh. Corner pocket, baby. Robert Burridge! To keep it going. What are these guys on? And we keep the pressure building the deeper into the course we get. Hole four out over the water, Burridge would be up first. Skipping off a stump right in front of the green, Burridge is looking at a dangerous putt. Simon throws it out over the water behind the basket. A good look at Birdie. Now I've built this up to be the best playoff, but sad to say, it doesn't have a happy ending. Burridge would be blocked on his putt with water behind the basket. He chooses not to run it. Now Simon has a chance to win the tournament. For a win. Did he point to yeah. the crowd? Thanks for watching, guys. An amazing season of disc golf. I thought it would be fun to recap all those crazy playoff moments. Make sure to check out my channel. Plenty of videos on there just like this one. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notifications button. Much more off-season content to come. Cheers.